Today, we're gonna create physically accurate fabric materials. Let's go. Almost three years ago, I created a cloth shading video showing how to use a double Fresnel term to simulate all types of cloth. I'll link that video down in the description. In that video, I mentioned that the techniques I was showing were an approximation of cloth but that they weren't physically accurate. Well, today I'm building on that video to go one step further. I'm gonna show you how to use the specialized lighting models provided by Unreal and Unity to create physically accurate fabric materials. First, it's important to understand the difference between material properties and lighting models. In most graph-based shader editors, what you're doing in the graph is defining material properties. So you're telling the engine what the base color, normal, smoothness, and metallic properties of the surface are. It's important to understand that these are the properties of the surface that are inherent to the material itself before any lighting is applied. Once these properties are defined, the engine also brings in all of the lighting information from the current scene. It combines the material properties and the lighting information using a math formula called a lighting model to produce the final appearance of the pixels. So when we're doing things in the material graph, we can control the material properties, but we can't change the lighting model itself or how the material actually interacts with light. To actually control the lighting model, we use the material dropdown in Shader Graph's Graph Inspector or in Unreal, we select the shading model in the detail panel of the material. So let's take a look at what happens in Unreal when we change our shading model to cloth. And then we'll take a look at the fabric material type in Unity in just a minute. All right, here we are in Unreal. And you can see that I've created just a really basic material here. I've got a hard-coded green value going into my base color. I've got my roughness set at 0.3. And then I have a normal map here, which is made to make the surface look like it's uh, a nice weaved cloth pattern here. And you can see I'm doing that by, I multiply my texture coordinates by five, and then I pass those into my normal map here uh, to get this nice uh, cloth looking surface shape. However, you might notice that my model looks kind of plasticky. And the reason that it looks like plastic is because it's using the uh, default lit shading model. If I come down here to uh, my details panel, you can see my shading model is set to default lit. And this is the shading model that most materials use, um, but this sh particular shading model does tend to make things look plastic. So what we're gonna do is just drop this down and I'm gonna come over here and pick cloth. And you can see nothing has really changed um, but there are a couple of new options here uh, on my root node. Let's take a look at these. So first of all, I've got fuzz color, and then I have this cloth value here. Now you might notice that I have this hard-coded zero value plugged into cloth. So let me explain what this cloth value is first. This is kind of like the uh, metallic property in that it's, it's a mask that sets whether or not my surface is cloth. And so if I have it set to zero, it's not cloth. And if I set it to one, it is cloth. So if you paint a texture mask that is uh, determining what areas on your model are made out of cloth and what areas are not, then you can plug that mask in here and the areas where your mask is white will get the cloth shading and where it's black, it'll be masked off. So for example, if you were gonna create a pair of blue jeans and you wanted the cloth to be applied on everywhere on the jeans except for the little rivets that are holding the things together, then you can paint those black and pass that mask into uh, the cloth input here. So let's see what happens if I set this value to one. All right, so now you can see that my cloth is significantly more uh, cloth-like uh, and no longer has that bright, plasticky, specular highlight anymore. And now it, it looks like uh, some nice cloth. That's pretty cool. So what we're doing here uh, is simulating the effect of uh, 
cloth like wool or cotton where there's a layer of fibers that are built up on the surface. And uh, so we have this color here, this uh, second input called fuzz color. And I can pass a value into that that will simulate uh, what those fibers are doing to interact with the light. And I found that a value of around 0.1 works the best. Um, so that's what I've got it set to. So we're able to use this cloth lighting model uh, to simulate something that looks significantly more like wool or cotton uh, than if we had it set to uh, default lit. And we might end up with uh, something that's significantly more plasticky. All right, let's take a look at a practical example. This is the Sparrow model that Unreal created for their Paragon game uh, that was discontinued. And you can see that this model is using their uh, nice cloth shading model. So here in these gray areas especially, if we come around to the other side of the character, you can see that this nice uh, gray cloth uh, has that really wool or cottony feel to it because the shader is using the cloth shading model. So if we take a look at the shader, uh, you know, it's obviously significantly more complicated than mine. Um, but if we come over here to the shading model, you can see that it's set to cloth. And if I set it to default lit instead, those areas that were using the cloth shading model uh, now look significantly different. And if we set it back to cloth, you can see that they're leaning really heavily on that shading model to, to create these, uh, these fabrics. So we're able to use the cloth shading model uh, to create a look that is significantly more uh, realistic and looks like cloth instead of looking plasticky. And the two controls that you have there are the uh, cloth input, whether or not the surface is cloth, and then also the fuzz color that controls uh, what color that, that fuzziness is. All right, let's switch over to Unity and take a look at the cloth shading methods provided by that engine. All right, here we are in Unity, and you can see that I've created a really similar shader to the one that I had in Unreal. I've got my cloth color set to green, and I've got this normal map applied that makes it look like uh, there's a lot of like thread detail on the surface. And the way that I'm doing that is with a node called Thread Map Detail. So if I open my searcher here and just type thread, you can see there's this node here called Thread Map Detail. And I can use this to apply this really nice, uh, tight surface normal that makes it look like it's created out of uh, individual threads. Um, so you can see for this node, I'm passing in my UV coordinates multiplied by kind of a high number so that I can tile that thread map detail a little bit tighter. All right, and so right now you can see that my cloth uh, kind of looks plasticky, just like it did in Unreal. And the solution for that is to open up my graph inspector here and go to my graph settings. And you can see my material type is currently set to lit. And so what I can do is drop this down and set it to fabric instead. All right, and now my shading model is using fabric instead of lit. So it looks significantly less plasticky and a lot more like cotton or wool. So you can see here in, in Unity, I have this material type and right now it's set to cotton or wool, but I can also set it to silk. And this will give me a more of a, more of a shiny anisotropic type of fabric. Uh, so I actually have two different types of fabric I can use here in Unity. I can use wool, which is uh, really fibrous and not very shiny, or I can use silk that's kind of uh, anisotropic and significantly more shiny. So you can see there's kind of two different elements that I'm playing with here. I have this thread map detail, uh, which is creating the normals for my, for my shader. And I also have uh, the material model that I can set to fabric. And then I have the option of cotton wool or silk, depending on what kind of material I want. Now, Unity ships with some really nice examples uh, for how to create these uh, fabric shaders. 
So if I come here to the window menu and I pick package manager and then select high definition RP, you can see that there's this material samples uh, package if I go to the samples tab here. And if you install those, uh, you'll see some really nice examples of what Unity can do with fabric materials. I've used a couple of those examples here. So let's let's take a look. So this is my cotton material. You can see if I zoom in really close, I've got this nice cotton weave pattern. Here is the denim material. And again, if I zoom in, there's kind of a denim weave pattern. Here is uh, nylon. And you can see if I zoom in here, it, it kind of has a synthetic uh, material weave pattern. And then finally silk. So all of these um, different types of materials are possible to create using the fabric shading model uh, within Unity. All right, so that's what I wanted to show today. And what I wanted to emphasize is that in order to create these kinds of effects, not only do you need a nice shader uh, in your graph to define the material properties, but you also need to set your lighting model uh, to be fabric or cloth in both Unreal and Unity so that you can get these nice effects. All right, that's it for today. Be sure to post questions down below if you have those uh, and make sure to come back next week. I think we're going to cover uh, anisotropic metal surfaces next week, so stay tuned for that. Have a great week, everybody. 